Let's take a look at another example of how we can determine a generalized rate law for a particular reaction based on experimental data where we are manipulating the concentrations of the reactants uh, to a, on a molar level to get a molar change in rate of reaction per second here. So, uh, as we've been discussing, there are many factors that affect uh, how far a reaction goes to completion and also the rate at which the reaction happens. So rate, of course, is the change uh, of the reactants or the change in the appearance of the product over time, usually in seconds. Uh, and temperature is the factor that we normally think of, but there are many other factors that can play as well, such as uh, pressure if there are gaseous systems involved. But if we are only looking at it from the change in molar concentration of the reactants, we can put this law in place here. So we run multiple CHOP trials where we are manipulating a change in one reactant or the other reactant or sometimes both, but we need multiple trials to compare to get that sense of the effect of reactant concentration change, if any. If there isn't any, we call that a zero order reaction. But uh, many times, uh, the change in concentration can have uh, a change that can be viewed logarithmically, or which we would call a first order reaction, or whether we would have a second order reaction, which is a, uh, a squared value uh, effect. So what we do is we look at where we kind of break it down for one reactant at a time. So let's take a look at reactant A. We notice trials three and four are where reactant A gets changed. And we see, yes, it is causing a change in the, in the uh, rate, but to what degree? So we simply uh, compare the two trials in terms of concentration and in terms of rate. And we see that a threefold concentra concentration change results in a ninefold change in rate. And so if we simply turn this into an exponential expression, that is, you know, three to the second power is nine, or nine divided by three, um, you know, three squared is nine, you know, and so we would call this a second order. So that particular reactant gets uh, a, a squared order value, uh, as its exponential degree. Now we move on to the B reactant, and we, we could either compare trials one or two, um, or we could try, compare trials two and three. If this is properly gathered data, either analysis will work. So we will just take two over one, uh, we doubled the reactant concentration and it doubled the rate. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's first order. Uh, you could put a one here. It is not necessary if the letter, if, if the molar concentration is represented by itself with no coefficients, it's assumed to be first order, but you can put the one or not. So we now have sort of a skeleton of the actual rate. And what's missing though is the constants. So constants mean what they say, no matter how we're changing the reactants, the, there is a multiplying factor that, that helps make this reaction work and, and mathematically. And so we can simply plug in from any, the data from any trial and solve for the constant because if it's a constant, we should get the same answer. I just, last video I picked trial one. This time I'll pick trial four. It doesn't matter. It should not matter when you're solving for a constant, when you have experimental value uh, data. If there is a constant to be found, any trial should work. So we simply plug in the results. Here's the rate equals K times A squared, um, uh, times uh, b squared, and we don't forget that uh, b uh, times b, not b squared, 
and we manipulate the data algebraically, this side divided by that side, and we get a large constant of one times 10 to the seventh power. Now we can have our fundamental uh, rate law here. The rate is our constant of 1e7 times a squared times b. And thus we have solved for a rate law for this particular reaction. It will always be different for every different type of reaction based on the data by first finding the rate orders for each reactant and then plugging in data from any trial we choose to solve for K constant.